We're in the TechCrunch studio today with Vinny Lingham, co-founder and CEO of Gift. Vinny, welcome to the studio. Thanks, Neil. So Good tell us, oh, well, welcome. Tell us a little bit about Gift. You guys just launched, um, I guess, in September. Yep. At TechCrunch, just right here in San Francisco. Um, walk us through what Gift does. So Gift is a mobile application that allows you to store, send, receive um, gift cards. We've digitized the gift card experience, so you don't have to carry that plastic card with you anymore in your wallet and you know take up space and. We allow you to um, you know, take photos of your card or enter the details into our app. We recreate a digital version, and we allow you to redeem them in stores. Got it. So, how like are you working with a lot when you're when you're building the application? Are you working with a lot of retailers? And how did you pick going after gift card market? Because I've seen over the last couple of years a number of companies trying to, you know, um, collect old gift cards or the ones that aren't used oh. and. How is that market evolving for you? Sure. So, you know, we, we, when we looked at the market, we, we really thought about it deeply. And we thought, do we, you know, where do we want to play in the mobile payment space, in the gift carding space? Where can we add value? Where can we improve the consumer experience? What we found is consumers are very disappointed with the gift card experience. They appreciate the thought and the gesture, but it's just a hassle. You have to carry the cards with you. You have to check balances. So instead of going to the broader market, loyalty and rewards and, you know, um, Open loop payments, as it's called, uh, we decided to, to, to focus on what's already the infrastructure that's already exists out there, where retailers issue you know 16 digit codes typically on the back of a card, yeah. and uh, and that's a prepaid amount that you can spend at that retailer and make that transferable, so you can you know re-gift existing cards, right. you can buy gift cards, and so we set out to work with as many you know top name brands as we could, and you know, we've got quite a few on board, and uh, so the goal is basically to be the one-stop shop for all your mobile gift cards. Now, do do retailers really like gift cards? Because I remember a while ago, they, they liked gift cards a lot because a lot of people wouldn't redeem them, right? Mm -hmm. So they could book the cash. Yep. But now the laws have changed, right, a little bit on both sides. One, there's no expiration or the expiration dates are longer, and also they can't, is it true that they can't book the revenue from them until the card is redeemed? Yeah. So the, the misconception is that they still like the, the breakage model. It's not true. Uh, there's, okay. So after five years, the money goes to the state. That's a federal law. Okay. And under achievement uh, laws, which basically means it's lost property, okay. the consumer can still claim the money back from the state. And you, you're right. You cannot claim that, that the, the prepaid purchases as revenue. So what retailers have, have switched towards right now in the model is getting consumers to spend those cards in store. And they typically have found that Consumers spend, you know, three to five times the value of the gift card when making purchases. So oh, they actually get a lift in sales by selling gift cards. Got it. And so there's a huge drive to drive consumers in, and there's actually demand from consumers to use our application. We had over a, a million dollars in gift cards loaded in the first three weeks, uh, you know, since launching a TechCrunch Disrupt. And uh, consumers basically gave us the, the, the gift card information, and now they're using those cards on their mobile devices in store. Got it. And in, ter in terms of um, the gift card market, what what does that look like right now? Are people buying, you know, similar amounts of gift cards every year? Is it trending up or down? Mm. How do you how do you see that market? So the gift card market in 2008 was roughly 60 billion dollars. This year, it's expected to be 120 billion dollars, and that's just the in U.S. One alone. Year. Three years, four years. Okay. So you know, in four years, roughly, it's it's doubled uh, from 60 to 120 in the U.S. So it's, it's a pretty, and that's in a bit of a down economy. And uh, so it's been interesting how people are using gift cards as a form of, of payments. mobile payments as well. Yeah. Uh, you know, people send gift cards to each other just to thank them. Or, you know, we've had users have written in to us and say, you know, I, I wanted to buy my sister uh, something and, you know, it was just too much of a hassle. So I sent a $50 Amazon card and uh, <laughs> it right. took me seconds on my mobile device. And there's right. no, you know, there's no fees. There's no money transfer fees. It's a simple, yeah. um, it's a simple, Purchase. Now, when you guys launched in September, that was about three, two or three weeks ahead of um, iOS 6 launching, right, mm -hmm. with iPhone 5? Yep. Um, how did you guys think about building Gift as it relates to Passbook now? So I've been using Passbook, and I've, I mean, first of all, it's a brilliantly designed application. And what I found is actually that there's a couple magical things happening. One is that, you know, I went to the airport. My, my boarding pass just sort of emerged. Mm -hmm. I didn't even set it, I don't think. Mm -hmm. um, or maybe I did. And the other thing is it seems to replace other applications I would go to. Mm -hmm. um, so how did you guys build Gift 
with iOS 6 Passbook in mind. So there were, there were two things. Um, we started building, building GIFs way before uh, Passbook was even announced. I mean, we, we had started the pre last year uh, on the concept and the, and the product. And, uh, That's good luck. Uh, well, <laughs> uh, I'd say a little bit of luck, a little bit of you know, uh, intuition and industry insight. I, mean, I think the key insight was, in, in building the product, the key insight was that we didn't believe that Apple would put NFC chips in the iPhone 5. Because for various reasons, okay. um, and we believe that there's an existing barcoding system that's already in place amongst merchants, right. we, 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 and with the growth that Starbucks had uh, on the Starbucks mobile app, that was right. just a clear indicator. So that's how do you get going. the barcode on the application? Exactly. Yeah. So that's what we did. So we basically said, okay, how do we get to a point where we can generate these barcodes yeah. for consumers and we can show these the, these numbers and make it easy? Because consumers do not want to have an app for every single retail store that they frequent. Okay, yeah. and places like Starbucks is perfectly good reason why they should have a, uh, an app. It's a frequent purchase. You go every single day, you make a purchase, you buy your coffee. Yeah. That's an app you want to have on your phone. But for retailers, you visit once or twice a year, even three or four times a year, it's just not worth the space on your phone. And therefore, the concept around gift was for all those mid to low frequency stores that yeah. you have gift cards for, store them in one place and have one app that does everything for you and does it very well. Got it. So, and so you guys are fully integrated now into Passbook, right? We were fully integrated with Passbook in the first uh, couple of days that the Passbook launched. We were expecting it, so uh, it was easy for us to get up and running with great. them. And it's been a great response. Uh, right now, we're the only way of getting a gift card um, into Passbook, uh, except for, f for a few merchants who've done uh, their own native integration. So Starbucks, for example, you can Got push it. a Starbucks card into Passbook. But for all the other hundreds of merchants out there, yeah. uh, and thousands, there's no way of doing it except gift. And you can use GIF right now. Uh, you can create custom merchants and upload it. So we do the balance checking for you on, on the ones that we support, and then the rest you can just you know, enter the balance yourself and we'll support your gift card Got in it. Passbook. And, and so as, as the holidays approach, is there a way that you would, you know, consumers who are buying gift cards, would you like them to use GIF or a novel way to use GIF that you can tell us about? So we think, you know, we think consumers should use GIF in, in you know, a number of different ways. Yeah. Uh, I, I think, you know, the the thing about gifting and gift cards, it's well, like it's I mean, a replacement walk, walk, for walk us through if somebody's watching this and saying, okay, yeah, I want to give out a bunch of gift cards this year, and mm -hmm. I just don't want to deal with the hassle of going and getting them mm -hmm. or buying them online. They can just download your application, yep. set, set who they're going to deliver it to, set the merchants, and that's it. Yep. So we've made a big push to get our Android app out. It's coming out in two weeks' time. Okay. Uh, so that'll be out. So by by the time you know the holiday season comes around, you yeah. have. Android and you have iOS and you can send to anyone's smartphone to receive because it, it works on HTML5. So we focus on making sure there's ubiquity in, in the platform. And so to answer your question specifically, um, we want to be the app that you use at the right place at the right time. So we're pulling in your friend, your friend's likes so we can tell you if you're sending to a certain friend uh, which stores they should send to. That'll be out uh, sometime it. next month uh, you know, ahead, ahead of the Christmas um, you know, the, the last couple of days before Christmas. So you have a sense of like what kind of gift card yeah. you get them. Yeah, yeah. What's okay. what type of gift card that people, you know, your friends would like. It's very difficult to choose. Right. And, and the other thing is, you know, we also want to be that convenience app. We want to be the app where, you know, if you want to go and, and pick something for someone and you want to go to Facebook Gifts, for example, and you want to choose a teddy bear or a box of chocolates, that's totally fine. And deliver physical good and it'll get there. You, know, you need a couple of days, lead time, etc. But on Christmas Eve, you're snowed in, you can't get out of your house, you want to send uh, you know, gifts to your friends, you couldn't get to the mall, or you, you, things are sold out, or you, yeah. you know, that's the time you use gift. You say, you know what, I was trying to buy you a, uh, you know, a new yeah. blender, yeah. I, you know, I, I couldn't get it, but here's a $50 Amazon gift card, go and buy that right now, or order online, yeah. and, and the person takes the code and does it. And you can you know, send messages and, and, and the like to the user. So, so we, we see it as, as we, we want to be high on the convenience list, and the experience is great. So you know, both sides yeah. love the experience. And it's great animations and, and flows, but, but we don't see ourselves replacing the physical gift card market. The physical gift market, sure. we see ourselves enhancing the, the plastic gift card sure. market and actually converting it over to digital. Any, any advice you would give to developers out there who are building, let's just say even for non-gift card or couponing apps uh, or payment apps, how to, you know, how to leverage Passbook, right? Because it is a new... Mm -hmm. Um, I, th I feel like right now people are underestimating how powerful Passbook could be. Yep. Um, any anything you've learned in the last six months that you would share with other developers, you know, just sort of broad principles of, of dealing with Passbook. Yeah. So the, for me, the broad principle I, I would share for any developers out there is pick a, pick a portion of the market and focus intensely on it. 
you know, if we try to do rewards and coupons and all these all these other right. things out there, we would have failed in delivering what we think is a, a beautiful product, which you know, consumers love. Um, we would have failed. But we've stuck with gift cards. We do the balance checking. We do, the, you know, but how the about barcoding. From, how about from the passbook point of view? Let's say but no, no, but this is for yeah. passbook. Yeah. So this is for passbook. So I, I've, oh, met I with, I've met with a couple of entrepreneurs that are trying to do, be all things to all people and build, you know, uh, a, a passbook sort of tool that can allow you to do everything. So I said to them, well, how do you check balances on gift cards? Well, we, we don't really do that, okay? Uh, how do you check whether the coupons expired or not by the retailer? Oh, we can't do that. So the, the, the problem that you have is when you lose focus, um, you, you, you lose depth in your product. Mm. And that for us is a very important thing, a gift. We want to be a very deep product. We understand the gift carding space. We understand the mobile gift carding space. And that's all we want to do. So we get the questions of, can I add my IDs into, into uh, gift? Can we add uh, you know, mm -hmm. uh, medical cards? And, and there's other great products out there that, that do that really well. But what we do is gift cards and mobile money, essentially, through gifting. Got it. And so just shifting gears a little bit, I think it'd be interesting for you to share sort of how you came to Silicon Valley, because you've been an entrepreneur in South Africa yeah. before, have started multiple companies, mm -hmm. In, and operated and started up companies in different countries. Um, so what did you do before you came to Valley and what is it like now starting a company here yep. relative to the other places? So Gift is the first company I've actually started in the U.S., which is okay. great. My previous uh, two companies were started in Cape Town. Okay. Uh, the first one was Clicks to Customers. It's a paid search engine uh, platform uh, and, and company. It's, it's still operating in Cape Town and uh, you know, clients around the world. And you know, th my exposure at Clicks to Customers in 2003 uh, when I started the company w w was amazing because I get to travel to the U.S. We had a ton of business. We, we basically ran paid search campaigns um, uh, for in industrial strength clients. So, for example, Walmart.com was a client, and we, we did all the uh, paid search through that, through that company. Uh, and uh, you know, we learned a lot, how to scale 50 million keyword campaigns, uh, et cetera. So that was an interesting experience. And having built a company in Cape Town, you know, we got up to, I think, 60, 70 people at the time. So you know, I interesting type of business. Um, one of the, the learnings I had and as I moved into wanting to be more of a product-focused entrepreneur is that it's very difficult, difficult to scale um, it's difficult scale service service type business where you have you know big enterprise clients and it's a lot of uh, hand holding. Uh, so that, that's a lesson. I learned. then when I saw what was happening Web 2.0, I just realized I wanted to build more products. And uh, so one of the products we were working at, at the time was um, Yola, uh, Yola.com, and it's basically a website builder. It's been focused on the small business market, getting small businesses online, uh, helping them to connect to the audiences. And you know, so I raised some capital for that in 2007, and, and moved uh, moved it to Silicon Valley, and, and built up. You know, we have an office in, in San Francisco still, and it's uh, it's doing pretty well. So that's been great. It's been five so years. So both the companies you started are are still in existence. Yes. Today. So Clicks to Customers was actually acquired uh, recently okay. uh, in South Africa, but I, I mean, I, I exited uh, yeah. personally in 2000. I think seven or eight, yeah. uh, and Yola's still in, in San Francisco. So spent five years living in San Francisco. I had a kid uh, about you know, three years ago. Okay. And so last year, I decided to, I got my green card last year. Oh, congratulations. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, decided to, yeah. To, to look at some new and options. So and so what you know. is it like now, having founded two companies in South Africa, now founding a company here? Although you have some experience mm -hmm. here, has it been different? What are, you know, um, relative to your earlier experiences? I think, you know, I, I don't think it's necessarily a, a different um, experience in terms of finding a company. I think it's a, it's, it's look part of part of actually living in the valley is is understanding, you know, what's important and what's not when you're building a company and what you need to focus on. And I think I've got a deeper appreciation having spent you know, the past uh, five years living here of of how to build. You know how to build product and how to build product in a different way, which is, which is uh, scalable. So it's learnings which I don't think I could have learned anywhere else in the world, other than being here. So I think that's what I'm, I'm really grateful for is just the, the and working with amazing people and, and the network. I mean, what makes Silicon Valley unique to any other part of the world, although you have you know talented people everywhere building great products in every part of the world, uh, and you know. Gift, we have engineering in, in Cape Town. We had some work done in China. Uh, you know, YOLO, we had the same thing, engineering in San Francisco and, and Cape Town. Um, it, it's, not about, it's not about the engineering or, or the talent of the people. It's also about the, the network density. So in Silicon Valley, there's just so many entrepreneurs and technologists. The network density of technologists here is second to none in the world. Um, you know, and um, if you look at the way hubs form, 
around certain um, industries, you know, Detroit and motor industry, etc. There's actually, you know, the, the, I believe in the cluster approach. I really do. I think that, that it's important that these clusters form and, and um, they lead to opportunities and serendipity, as it's called often in the Valley. It's just chance meetings. I mean, you know, University Avenue, one minute you're sitting having a coffee with a friend, the next minute an investor do, walks by. Do you feel like it's more competitive here? It's definitely more competitive, but also, you know, the, the types of businesses that you're launching here are very different. Uh, and the, the VCs have got a different mandate. And VC, you know, investors outside of Silicon Valley look for investments in business that can produce strong cash flows, you know, and, and, and profits over time. And investments in Silicon Valley, although they are looking at that, there are, there are stages of investors that are looking for innovation. And there's a different, you know, there's a different mindset here. You know, can we? You know, there's a, there's a, the failure mindset here is actually is, is fantastic because it's you know, let's put a bit of seed capital in. The idea fails. Too bad close it down, try something else. Yeah. So there's a lot more uh, uh, you know, willingness to experiment. And although a lot of places outside Silicon Valley pay lip service to it, they don't really do it. I mean, I, I've witnessed in some countries where you know, governments, for example, trying to set up funds to fund innovation, and they just fail miserably at it. Because mm -hmm. you know, they, you know, they, they make entrepreneurs go through, you know, to get a $250,000 investment at the C stage, they make them go through like three months, but then the company's already closed. Yeah. <laughs> you know, they, they don't understand the, and how the pace of innovation, how it needs to work. Yeah, got it. Yeah. Well, congratulations on launching Gift, and have a great holiday season. Great, thanks, Emil. <laughs> right. Cheers.